we are going to use the base function 1 0 to as an alternative to the typical t-test in the frequentist version. So the base factor is, a, is going to be used as a Bayesian alternative to the t-test. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we calculate the base factor by first obtaining the probability of the data given the alternative hypothesis or the model of the alternative hypothesis and then we calculate the probability of the data under the model of the null hypothesis and uh, and that would be the base factor so if that value is uh, more than one means that the um, alternative hypothesis has a higher probability than that of the null hypothesis and if it is lower than one the uh, Null hypothesis has a higher probability than the alternative hypothesis. We already talked about how to interpret or not interpret this, or whether we should use thresholds or not. So let's go up how we calculate this. Well, that comes from the, the theorem that includes the parameters. So the parameters and data form of the base theorem. And this is for the model of the alternative hypothesis and one part of that um, equation has the value that we are looking for which is this one probability of the data given the alternative hypothesis likewise we do the same with the probability of uh, the data given the null hypothesis so this is the value that we are interested in and it will be plugged in there and then we calculate the base factor now how do we do it in the um, case of having two groups we calculate uh, we measure the same variable in both groups and we want to see whether the some these two samples um, those values should be considered as coming from the same population of values or from different population of values. Um, so what we do is, as usual, we first need to have a prior distribution for the model of the alternative hypothesis and a prior distribution for the model of the null hypothesis. So, well, first of all, what's the uh, distribution about? So we're going to use this parameter delta, and, and that is the parameter that we are interested in. What's delta? Delta is calculated like this, um, is the, the mean of the population of a hypothetical population of group one, and the mean of a hypothetical population of group 2 and that is divided by the variance and some variance um, this variance could be a combined variance of the two samples uh, sorry, the two populations or a, the, the variance of one of the populations and then we do um, we need to uh, determine a prior so what values we expect what values we believe that are likely if the alternative hypothesis is true so in order to do that we use a distribution which we are showing here so that distribution could be a normal distribution around zero um and uh, but typically the the uh, what is used is uh, and, and the so software JASP uses is a different distribution called Cauchy and the Cauchy distribution is equivalent to a T distribution with a degrees of freedom of one and that distribution is like the normal distribution that centers around zero but 
the the tails are much much fatter so that means that relative to the normal distribution the probability of the of values in the center is are much lower um, and the probabilities and the values on the extremes are much higher i'm talking about relative to the normal distribution in itself the values are still uh, lower in the extremes and higher in the center of the distribution but the normal distribution will have even higher at the center and much lower at the extremes okay so um, we do the same with the model of the null hypothesis but the prior that we have is very different we have a spike on zero basically we say that zero is the only possible value all the or all the other values the probability is zero so they are impossible so that's the big difference between the model of the alternative hypothesis and the model of the null hypothesis now then the next step is to uh, obtain the probability of the data given the parameters um, in this case the parameter is delta so um, we have the the function or, or the the distribution we use in both cases is the same and there are many options but uh, typically uh, what is done well first of all we need to say well distribution over what values so we are saying here data but what's data well we can use a number of things so by data we can refer to um, uh, for example an effect size that would be the mean of the group one in our sample minus the mean of group two in our sample divided by some standard deviation that again it could be the the standard deviation of the first group or the or a combined standard deviation depends on the context and, and the interest or we can use a traditional t score that is calculated with this formula um, and that would be the data that, that so the summary of the data that uh, we are uh, um, we are going to use here so if we are using the t value then the distribution that we are going to use to determine the probability of each t score is the t distribution with degrees of freedom would be uh, dependent on the number of of um, uh, observations in our sample okay so this looks like a like t distribution for each of the values possible parameter values of delta and in this case it's the same as that but the difference is that i only have one distribution only for the possibility that th that uh, sorry theta is not theta is delta that the possibility that delta is zero and if let's see if delta is zero the most likely value in our sample is the t-score of zero and values away from zero are less likely so that's the t distribution okay so then the following step is to obtain the numerator of the of the base theorem by multiplying the probability of the data given the parameters times the prior of the parameter parameter values and and we obtain something like this we we did that before and we observe a a distribution in which the values in the center are much more likely than the values in the in the extremes now if we integrate all these values we get this um, probability of the data uh, given model one or, um, or mo the model of the alternative hypothesis for the model of the null hypothesis we've got this distribution which is much more uh, the probabilities are much higher in the center 
relative to the model of the alternative hypothesis, uh, but in the extremes the probabilities are very very small. So, and oh, sorry, and, and if we add these values, in fact, we don't add anything. It is just one value for for each of these uh, um, imaginary columns. Then we obtain that distrib this distribution here. Um, what's the difference between this distribution and that distribution? Well, in this distribution, we see that the probabilities are much higher in the center, and in this distribution, the probabilities are yeah, higher in the center than in the extremes, but much lower than in this case, and in the extremes is much higher than in this case. So, the next step is to say, well, we collect the data, and we obtain, a, let's say, a T-score. So, if the T-score we obtain is close to, to the extremes, so, for example, if we obtain, let's say, a t-score of 3, then we have to look at this probability and to this probability. And we are going to replace this over there and this value will go over here. And you can see that this value will be much higher for in the alternative hypothesis than in the null hypothesis because that's that's um, intuitive. So if the, if the value obtained in the sample is far from zero, then the alternative hypothesis is more likely than the null. Now, if the values are close to zero, like for example, if it is, let's say, very close to zero here, and here, then we replace, uh, we, we put these values, we plug in these values in the base factor formula. And in this case, when the value is close to zero, the probability will be much higher in the model of the null hypothesis than in the model of the alternative hypothesis. And therefore, the value of, of this base factor will be less than one. So the, that means that the, the model of the null hypothesis is uh, supported by the data.